Welcome to JSON Programming Tutorial Number 6. You will learn how to greatly enhance the functionality of the photo gallery that you built yourself from scratch in Tutorial Number 5. You will now greatly enhance it yourself if you just follow along with me, my friend. And one could easily apply transition animations to the events on the page, like when the images change or when the galleries change from one to the next. JSON has nothing to do with animation or any animation frameworks that you might want to apply like a little girl who wears panties and uses training wheels on her bicycle. The animation aspects are already in my JavaScript video tutorial playlist here on YouTube. Or you can choose to not learn how to scratch program animations yourself and you can use your framework that you're familiar with and little girls can say all they want in the YouTube comments. Okay, so regarding video number six here, what you're going to learn how to do is add this little box and these three links inside of it that will allow you to go from gallery one, that was the gallery that you learned how to program in video tutorial number five, and make it switch to a whole new different gallery without the page refreshing. And we're also going to show you how to not only scoop out JPEGs, which you can see all of these are JPEG images here, but this one is a uh, a dot png and this one is a dot gif and you can clearly see that that is an animated dot gif so it's really now a multi album gallery and you only added three lines of code and I'm going to show you the three lines of code to add to really expand the functionality of this gallery using just three lines of code because we intelligently programmed our gallery from the beginning in tutorial number five we set it up to be dynamic this way. So only three lines of code will allow you to switch from different galleries. And I show you also, so not only do you learn how to switch to different galleries, totally different folders, and dynamically pull all the image out, you will also learn how to let it load in different types of files. And the three that we're letting load in are GIF, PNG, and JPEG. Now the final aspect of how you'll be learning to extend the functionality of this is that it will now take in any size image and center it in your frame. So you can see in the picture frame, div, the images are centered no matter what size they are, you see? And if they're wider than 700 pixels, which uh, some of these are, it will auto fit to 700 pixels. So your images can be no larger than 700 pixels wide, which would break your design and make it go way out here, you see what I'm saying? So that's what you'll be learning, a whole bunch of different stuff to extend the functionality of the image gallery that you learned how to create yourself in tutorial number five. Now you'll be learning how to extend it yourself. Okay, to keep everything going in line, we're going to start with the same exact files that we left off with in tutorial number five. So we have JSON tutorial number five .html, and we have our JSON gallery data .php script, which is the magical file that does all of the dynamics for us. So take JSON Tutorial 5 and let's go to File, Save As, JSON Tutorial 6. Save, and you can close JSON Tutorial number 5, HTML. Now you see JSON Gallery Data.php? You can just close that file. Now go down in your HTML and right under the picture frame, we're going to add the new little box. See this little box right here with the rounded corners? That's the box we're going to add now, and that will give your users little links to click on for changing the gallery from one to the next. And that's an Ajax request when that happens, so the page does not refresh. So, in order to put that little gray box there, we're going to put a new div, a couple of lines down, make sure we close that div, and it has an ID of album menu box. And the first thing inside of that, you just want to put an H3 element that says my photo album, so whatever title you want to put up top. Then under your H3 element, you're going to put in three A tags, which are just simple links. And you can see that each href is set to the pound sign. That way it doesn't navigate anywhere. The on click event has return false JavaScript to make sure that nothing happens when the user clicks it. That way this pound sign doesn't show up in their address bar. And really you just want to have an on mouse down or on click event that fires off the Ajax JSON gallery function that we've had here the whole time. And just make sure that the first link says Gallery 1, the second link says Gallery 2 as a label. And really, you can make them labeled whatever you want. You can say, my soccer team here, my football team there, or whatever. 
and then you point to the folder that you want to grab for that particular gallery. So remember, we had gallery 1. So what I did in my folder system is I just added gallery 2 and gallery 3. And I'll show you that now. See here, I have gallery 1. And that's the one you're familiar with from tutorial number 5. Then I added gallery 2. Let's see the large icons on that. This one is a PNG. This one is a .gif. And the rest of these are JPEGs. And I did that just to spice things up, and mix it up, and make our programming a little more diverse. Then you have gallery number three, which is just a different set of images. And these are all JPEGs, but I made sure that we had different sizes, some small, some large, different aspect ratios, and different dimensions on all of those. So you can see how your gallery will center all of the images, no matter what size they are. And the gallery will not let them display any wider than 700 pixels on the page. So now you see Gallery 1, Gallery 2, Gallery 3, you have to FTP these up to your web server, your live website online, to make sure you run the test correctly. Okay, now that's it for the body element. That's all you have to add to your HTML. And actually, let's go ahead and put this line of title into the page top div. We're going to put that directly in the HTML instead of making JavaScript say that because each time you change galleries or the user switches galleries that text is going to be replaced and re-put into that div and really it only needs to be put there the first time when the page loads okay so that is all of your HTML you can take the body element and collapse it and actually in your JavaScript function you're not going to have to change any of that either you can collapse all your JavaScript up now I want you to take picture frame and take the height away from that and then where you had the height, put text align center. So what that's going to allow you to do is have a taller picture be displayed in full in that space. And if it's a really small itty bitty picture, it'll be centered in the picture frame box. Text align center does that. Then right under that, I want you to add this div picture frame and we're going to target the image that goes into the picture frame and we're going to put a maximum width property of 700 pixels that way if you load in a big giant picture that's maybe 1400 pixels wide it will only display the largest size it will display is 700 pixels and its height will be adjusted accordingly so it won't lose any aspect ratio or proportions so if you have a very very large picture it will be shrunken to 700 pixels wide and the height will be shrunken accordingly and if you have a really itty bitty tiny picture loaded in it will center in your picture frame you can also put a minimum width setting here if you want to put min width and set it to 700 pixels that would make sure that it couldn't be displayed as itty bitty and it would have to expand and distort it and it would actually blur a little tiny picture out to, to expand it like that so maybe you don't want that. But if you wanted to force it to be 700 pixels, no matter what, you can add that. Okay, now the last line to finish off your cool little album application is this. We're going to have the div album box. And that's the one that we added here in the HTML. That was the little gray box with the rounded borders. So you can see the last setting in it is border radius 10 pixels. That's how we got that border to be rounded like that all the popular new modern browsers that people use will support that border radius setting then we have a color of black that way your little title shows up as black within that gray box padding is 12 the background color is a very light gray the width is 200 pixels and it's set off the top 100 pixels off the top of the page so you have 100 pixels here left 856 pixels so you have 856 pixels from here to here, the end of the page. And its position is fixed, just like your picture frame is fixed. That way it doesn't scroll if there's a whole lot of images in there. Say we go to Gallery 1, neither of these items scroll. Actually, this item, this item, and this item are all fixed position. That way the only thing that scrolls is a whole lot of images that get piled in here on the left. I'll even take JSON Tutorial 6 and save it as JSON Multi Album Gallery. Save. So I have JSON Multi Album Gallery.html, and that's what I'll FTP up to the web right now for testing.
So in my URL address bar, JSON multi album gallery dot HTML. And there's the first gallery, it loads in by default, and the first picture from the first gallery gets loaded into the picture frame by default. Now if I click gallery two, gallery two comes. Oh, you know what? I have to show you guys one thing. I just noticed that in gallery two we're missing our dot animated GIF and our PNG file. And you know why that is? Even though they're in the folder on the server online, we never changed it in uh, JSON gallery data dot PHP. You do have to change one line in here, and I'm going to show you that right now. Okay, you see where we have the string position function here? Highlight that, and it's opening and closing parentheses here. And we're going to replace it with this. So you can see I just replaced that with a preg match function. Now we're going to use a preg match function that is utilizing a regular expression. And the regular expression reads that the file must contain a .jpg a .gif or a .png extension in order for it to get scooped up and be part of our gallery. So now, since you understand how that works, and whatever file extension type you want to add to that, you can just put another pipe symbol here, .txt. That'll pick up a text file, but there's no reason why you would want a text file to go into a gallery, would you? And we have the I, we're using the in case sensitive regex. That way, if it happens to be a capital PNG on the image like that, it will still get plopped in. It'll still get scooped up and put in no matter if these are uppercase or lowercase on the actual file extension. So now press Control S and re FTP that up. Now go to your gallery live online and refresh the page. Now click Gallery 2 and you'll see now we're now scooping up, intelligently scooping up all kind of file types that are images and plopping them right into our galleries. Okay, there you go. Okay, so we just have one more video tutorial left for the JSON programming series. What number seven will cover is it will show you how to query a MySQL database and take the fetched array, the resulting array of data that you get from your MySQL database and returning it to your JavaScript and AJAX applications as JSON encoded data.